when you create a production database, you have several choices to connect backend databases and actually several methods to connect them. You know, this video will basically discuss four different ways to connect to the most common database backends. So let's go ahead and get started. Method one is a user DSN. Now, a user DSN is stored locally in the Windows registry. It limits database connectivity to the user who creates it. In other words, whoever is logged into that Windows account at the time it's created is the one that can use that particular DSN. In other words, if you create a user DSN under your user account, no other user will be able to see it or use it. Method number two is a file DSN. A file DSN is a special type of file that stores all the connection settings. File DSNs are saved by default in the Program Files, Common Files, ODBC Data Sources folder. And because the connection parameters and values are stored in a file, they can be easily shared with others. If others require to use the same connection, simply send them the DSN file, and you won't need to configure a new DSN for each system. Now, I've used this one quite often when I have to send the access data file to a user, a lot of times I'll just send the connection file with them. And by doing that, they're already configured and ready to go. Next method is a system DSM. Now a system DSM is stored locally in the Windows registry and allows any logged on user process or service to see it. System DSMs are often used in establishing connections to external data sources from active server pages, ActiveX, or other data database systems. Now our fourth and final method that we'll talk about today is the DSNless ODBC connection. Now it's possible that your VBA application that relies on a, an ODBC DSN or data source name may suddenly fail because the DSN was modified or deleted. You know, therefore, it may be a better idea to use a so-called DSN-less connection. Instead of setting up a DSN, either a file system or user DSN, specify the ODCBC driver name and all the driver specific in your information in your connection string within your VBA code. You know, different types of databases can require you to specify different parameters. But because the ODBC DSN setup is not required, this type of connection is a lot of times called DSN-less or without a DSN. So let's take a look then at what it takes to set up these different types of DSN files. So we'll go first to the control panel. And on your system, you go to system and security. And then it's scroll down to the bottom, you'll find Windows tools. Now, Windows Tools has two ODBC data sources, 32-bit and 64-bit. We're going to set up some 64-bit ones, and then right at the end, I'll show you a 32-bit one. The first thing I'm going to do is click Add on the User DSN tab, and I'm going to go down to SQL Server, and I'm going to point this towards a, a SQL Server that I have set up within my local network. So I'm going to call it Pharos Backend. The description is just going to be Pharos. Uh, the server is going to be uh, Doc. It's a nickname I go by regularly around here. I click Next, and I'm going to use the SQL Server with authentication with a login ID and a password. And I'll, I'll go ahead and input those. Now, I also need a client configuration. Now, your database administrator will be able to give you this information. Now, in my case, I have to not let it dynamically determine the port. I need to point it to, to a specific port. So I'm going to uncheck it and then retype it in there. And you'll notice that uh, 50617 is just a, a, a data port on, on my server. It obviously recognized the server because it, it immediately took me to the next screen. And I could choose a database from that server called TestDB. Don't really need to change anything here, but this is the next screen it brings up when I click Next. And uh, then when I click Finish and test the data source, you see that it was successful. So now you see Pharos backend is on my user DSN list. 
Now let's move over to the system DSM. Now it's going to get a little bit boring because you'll see as I just breeze through this really quick that it shows you all the exact same screens. So setting up a DSN really is the same for user, system, and files. A little bit different layout as you'll see, but pretty much the same. Okay, so you saw me set up all three of those different types. Now, you only have to set up one. I was just showing you really quick how to set up all three, but you'll notice that the file DSN is on your hard drive. Note where it is when you actually create it and you'll be able to retrieve it and use it to send it to other users. Now let's go ahead and go to a 32-bit one. Now, the old DBase files are 32-bit still in nature. So what I want to do is I want to create a, a system DB, DSN for the DBase file that I have on the hard drive. And so if we, I scroll down here, go to the Microsoft DBase driver for DBFs, I'm going to give it a name and the description then is just whatever I want to put in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and not use the current directory. I've got to go search for it. It knows that there is a file that encapsulates all the DBase information. So I'm going to select the directory. And here it, it shows me this little tiny postage stamp of a window that I've got to go ahead and navigate around and, and find the folder that I want. Down below it, I can select the drives. Notice we're really in Windows 32 world where it's the old style dialog boxes here. Um, but if I scroll down and go to demo databases, in there I've got a folder called databases. And notice it says customer DBF. I clicked on it. And then when I click OK, it says Microsoft DBase there that I, that's the name I gave it. So it's added there. Now we're all set, ready to go to the database and see what these things look like, okay? I can now attach my database to the various DSNs that I have created. So I'm going to link to the data source. And you'll notice I could choose a file data source. I could scroll all the way to the right and I would see Pharos Backend 3. Or I can go to Machine Data Sources and I see the backend and the uh, backend two, one created as a user DSN, the other one created as a system DSN. And now I pull, pull that over to the other side. Now it knows that I've got a Pharos database sitting on SQL Server. I put in the password. There's the table name at the top. I need to choose a rec unique record identifier. In other words, choose the key field on that. Once I do, I double click on it. I can edit the file. I can add records. I can delete records. I can do every anything uh, that I have as a native file too. So now I'm going to attach that DBase file here. And now in order to do a DBase file, I'm going to have to browse to where that DBase file is. The DSN identified what the driver is for it. Now I have to go ahead and link it actually to the actual file itself. And then when I click on OK, you'll see that I have the database table right there. If I double click on it, you can see the uh, the data that's in there and I can edit it, I can delete it, I can do any different type of uh, edits that I want to do with it. So now let's move on to our, to our next uh, slide here. There are two ways now you can connect to a database without using a DSN. In other words, we're going to talk about just using code to directly attach to a database, get the data that we want and pull it back. Those two ways are DAO, data access objects, and or ADO, ActiveX data objects. DAO is the native data access methods that they had when they were the old JET databases. Uh, those are really referred to as the, the old MDB databases. It's more integrated with access, offers better performance and control, especially when working with access databases. ADO though is newer and more flexible. More flexible in that it can attach to a variety of data sources. It's not restricted just to access data backends. So this technology can work with not just access in particular. It has a simpler object model than DAO and supports more features such as disconnected record sets, XML, and other kinds of transactions. Now, depending on your needs, you may choose to use the either DAO or ADO in your VBA code. 
If you only work with access databases, DAO may be easier and faster to use. But if you need to work with other types of data sources, such as SQL Server, possibly Excel or XML, ADO might be a better choice. You can also use both ADO and DAO in the same application. You just need to make sure that you don't do it in the same module where you've declared ADO objects and DAO objects that are active at the same time. Okay, so let's take a look at what that looks like to set those up. Here, the first one is a DAO example. Now, as we go through, we're going to set up C as a container, doc as a document. You were going to loop through the container and look at all the documents that are within the database as a whole. The database that we're going to look at is a Northwind database example. Uh, it is an older MDB file. And so what we're going to do is go to this for next loop under the with DB, and we're going to go through that. And when we do, it lists all of these things just very, very fast. Now, this database is not attached to it as a record set, like you saw me attach the SQL Server table or the DBF table, the database format table. Yet we can access it and look at the files and do things just like we could if they were attached. So let's look at our ADO example. In the ADO example, we're going to go ahead and look at the Northwind 2007. Dot ACCDB database. Now, the ones that are in the newer format. Now, in order to do that, we have a little bit different syntax that we're going to have to learn, and we'll get really good at it as we go on in the in this set of, these sets of videos. We identify the provider as an ACE provider, Microsoft.ace, OLEDB. We'll set the mode, in this case, read-write. We'll set the connection string as being the, the address, uh, the location to the ACCDB, and then we'll open it. And then we'll do a variety of things. We're going to set a message box that, that basically looks at the state of the database, whether it's open, and then we're going to go and just tell us, yes, the connection is open. And then we're going to go on and close it and then say, yes, the connection is closed. So we'll run it here and see if, see if we got it to work. Oh, okay. It didn't work this time. It says it's a user defined type, not defined. Well, that is a problem when we don't have the right uh, reference in there yet. So I need to stop the code, go down to my references. We need to add the ADO reference. And that, if we scroll down, is Microsoft ActiveX Data Objects 6.1 library. And now be sure to put that check mark in there because highlighting it and click OK doesn't get it set. You need to put that check mark in there to actually set it. Now let's go ahead and run it again. And it runs just fine. The connection was opened and we click OK. We close the connection and got a message back that says the connection was closed. So as we move forward in these videos, we're going to continue to explore accessing data through VBA code. As we do that, we're going to do some pretty unique things. We're going to compress the, a, a back-end database, which you can't normally do from the front ends. We can put that in code and compress the front end and then tell it, go ahead and compress the back end. We're going to do all kinds of different things, creating folders, creating files, creating tables, creating whole databases. You know, stay tuned for those next ones. In fact, hit that subscribe button. And by hitting that subscribe button, you'll get notified of any of those new videos that we put out. If you got some good information out of this video, hit that like button and we'll hopefully see you again later. Thanks.